recording. Cool. Hey everyone, I couldn't uh, help but make this little video for you now because uh, I've just been out here at Griffith Uni with Ben, who's behind the camera. Uh, ben is a honours student at Griffith who's doing some cool stuff about choice experiments and community uh, perceptions and value of water sensitive urban design. But we ended up sitting down here and having a great chat about a whole bunch of things. And something came up in the conversation that I wanted to share with you because it sent, sent my mind off on a, on a tangent that I think is really important. So the statement that, um, that was made was something along the lines of, well, maybe it's, and maybe it's naive to think that we'll ever achieve water sensitive urban design. That was the statement. And maybe it's naive to think we'll ever achieve water sensitive urban design. And it got me thinking about some stuff, right? So when Worcester was first, uh, first created, when the concept first came up, it was this really big picture vision of using water as best we can in urban environments, not only to protect the environment, but also to make the places as nice to live in, as green as possible, as aesthetically pleasing as possible, all this great stuff that parallels with you know, livable cities, that parallels with subtropical design in the case of Brisbane, because we're in Brisbane, um, and so on. But, the way over time as we've implemented water sensitive urban design, it's this initial implementation, because the concept's still pretty new, right? This initial implementation has been relatively narrow. And it's seen the first you know, tranche of this has been stormwater treatment systems, like bioretention systems and wetlands and that sort of thing. And it's happened at such a scale that, you know, the term, like bioretention systems are synonymous with WUSID. You literally hear bioretention talked about as as being wusset and it's not it's this tiny little fraction of this much bigger uh this much bigger thing that's water sensitive urban design that has all these much bigger um goals and ambitions from it and understandably sometimes people get frustrated by that and, and they're like well you know it's hard enough getting this bioretention component to work how do we you know is it is it really worth putting in the effort um to try and make the big dream work, could it work? Is it naive to think that water sensitive urban design can even work? And when I think about it, when I think about my still relatively short career in this space, something that jumps out at me is how the reason that I feel I've been able to contribute in this space is because I was able to stand on the contributions of people that came before me. So people who were really influential to me. And in, in this instance, it's people like the Sean Linsters of the world, the Alan Hobans, and so on and so forth. Who, and obviously there's many more people who've done good work, but those are two who are particularly influential for me. And because they were able to do good work uh, themselves at the time and set this strong foundation, then when I you know, joined the industry and got to know them a little bit, I was able to build on that in my own little way. And you know, the most obvious um, aspect of that for me is around like, managing stormwater treatment systems and that sort of thing but i was able to build on it and i'm equally aware now that other people come along like ben i mentioned ben who's behind the camera um, as a honor student at griffith is now building on a little bit of my knowledge and a little bit of everyone else's knowledge to do his own aspect of this right and so i look at it and i take a really really long-term view of water sensitive urban design and you can think of that in a bunch of different ways. you can think of that as a hundred years in the future you can think of that as 500 years of a thousand years as 10,000 years a hundred thousand years right if the goal here is ultimately to have a, a future society that is both sustainable and nice to live in then ultimately we have to get water sensitive urban design or something like it to work so I play I think of this as a really long time. So I fit the two of these together. I go, we need to make this work at some point. The sooner the better, right? But at some point we need to make it work and I'm prepared that it could take a long time, a lot longer than I'm gonna be here to see, right? And I combine it with the fact that we make progress by standing on the achievements of the people that come before us. So I, I think back to the comment, is it naive to think that Worcester will work? And I go, you know what? It doesn't actually matter. We still need to try. We try, we do the best that we can today because tomorrow someone else, well tomorrow I can build upon what I did and the day after that I can build upon it and at some point someone else comes in and builds upon it in their own little way and collectively we just take the little steps forward that eventually this thing works and we look back and go, wow, we're here. All of a sudden we are here and that is why 
I believe in putting in the work to make this happen. Even if sometimes I'm talking about super minute little stuff, like how do you maintain a bioretention system or why does that plant not work? Because it all just adds together and adds together and adds together and eventually we have the big picture. Sweet, that's it for now, have a good one.